In this video, I'll show you how I made an outdoor bar that folds up and stores away easily. I use a website called Cutlist Optimizer to map out my cuts of a sheet of plywood. You could have your lumber store make these cuts for you, or you could use a circular saw with guide. I use a Craig Track saw. Right now I'm working on one of the side panels. I'm framing the outer edge. I chose to do a 45 degree miter on the frame just to make it look prettier. On each side panel, I frame both the front and back, but on the back, I add an additional horizontal frame piece, which will ultimately hold up the shelf. When attaching, I find it easiest to shoot a brad nail through the middle of the frame first so that you can maneuver each end to try and get the tightest miter possible. Next, I cut quarter inch plywood into four inch strips. Now I'm working on the front of the bar, basically doing the same thing, just framing the outside edge, but I did add another frame piece down the center for the design that I wanted to do. Here is where those four inch strips come into play. I cut a 45 degree angle on one end and then use a pencil to scribe the opposite end where I need to cut. I just dry fit until I found that the pattern looked best. I used a scrap piece of a quarter inch plywood as my spacer between each strip. And then once I felt it looked good, I glued and nailed it down with five eighths inch brad nails. I filled all the nail holes with wood filler. Once the wood filler dried, I sanded everything down. Now we're going to attach the side panels onto the front panel. This was the piece that made me feel most intimidated because I've never used piano hinges before, but it was a total breeze, so don't sweat it. I got the inspiration for these plans from a YouTube video, Family Handyman. I have his plans in his video linked in my blog post. He uses this genius method of using these 90 degree squares to clamp the side panels in place while you attach the piano hinge, and this is what made it so freaking easy. Once the side panel was in place and clamped down, I put the piano hinge in the center and I first attached screws at the top and the bottom to kind of lock it in place and then attached all the rest of the screws that just came with the piano hinge. Okay, bear with me while I learn how to YouTube. I have no idea where the footage went making the countertop, but it's basically a three quarter inch plywood slab with one by two framing all around the edges. Once I got both side panels attached to the front with the piano hinges, I set it on the ground and opened it up. I put the countertop on top and centered it exactly where I wanted it to be, and then cut these little strips of one by two and glued and nailed them in place to kind of lock the bar. Man, this bar is three quarter inch plywood with one by two framing on basically every square inch. It is a beast. And so I ordered these two inch casters off Amazon and they fit the width of the panels perfectly. I love casters. I'll put them on basically anything I build, but always make sure you get the full swivel locking casters that all four of them do that. It came together so nice. One thing about this bar is when the doors are closed and it is flat, it will fall. So say during setup or when you're transporting it, make sure that you open the wings a little bit so that it can free stand. For the countertop, I put one by two scraps on the left side, the right side, and one in the front. So when it's on top, it does not shift in any direction. Now I'm measuring the space between the interior frame so I can cut my shelf. This is a good example of why I highly recommend a track saw. So if you had the lumber store make these cuts for you before you did your build, and then you mess up, which is likely to happen, or anything be off, it either won't fit or it'll fit too loose, but whenever you're making the cut yourself, you can make it exactly the size you need it. So everything is a perfect fit. 
Now that all the cuts are made, everything is assembled, I'm just filling all the nail holes again with wood filler and sanding it down one last time. Okay, I had just got a new paint sprayer, which is why I have this mega Dexter setup going on, but no worries, you do not need a paint sprayer, you could just roll this by hand. Who knows if any of this is necessary, but I did a coat of primer, two coats of white exterior paint, and then several coats of exterior poly. One secret to a super smooth finish is light sanding in between coats. Thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know if you end up trying this build and check back soon for more tutorials.